throughout the 90s what was the what was the first ski area open in the east i look up to basically everyone right. uh, welcome to meet the staffs aasi and psia eastern division this week i got to catch up with mr greg fatigate and i got to do this one in person so there will be rotating camera angles or multi-camera angles and i will be on screen on this one so please sit back and enjoy one thing to keep in mind is I do this after work as long as their schedule cooperates in mine, so there will be some background noises. And we got a guest interviewer, and that guest interviewer is Shauna, which is Greg's lovely wife. So thank you, Shauna and Greg, for letting me in to do this interview. Please sit back and enjoy. Let's meet Greg. Quick sell, who are you? I'm Greg, Greg Fatigate. Where are you from? I'm from New Milford, Connecticut. Nice. I grew up riding Mohawk Mountain in uh, Northwest Connecticut. We haven't been there yet. It's on my list. It's a good place. It's small, you know. It's a Connecticut place, but it's a uh, it's a good time. Check it out. Where are we now? We're in Eden, Vermont. Yeah. Yeah, about uh, 20 minutes from the border. Really? I'm that close to the border. You are that close to the border, but don't worry, you can't get through. <laughs> <laughs> they closed it again. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are you working nowadays? Well, I, I work at Smuggler's Notch year-round. I've got a couple different uh, roles I play there. In the winter, I'm the training manager. And in the summer, um, I'm the facilities manager for the disc golf course and the mountain bike trails. And then I also work uh, independently on my own, which I'm doing right now. Quite a lot of. All right. Yeah. Well, all the machines? Or you got to... Yeah. Slowly growing? Yeah, slowly growing. Got a skid steer, a mini axe, tractor, um, various other gas powered things to 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 mow things down. <laughs> it's a good time. Destruction. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, either building bike trails or doing uh, landscape like projects. I think it would be summed up like that. It's mostly like landscape like projects. Sweet. Without getting into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Sounds good. And you take that into the winter and you build part two a little bit of smokes or not I, so much? I've built parks in the past. Um, the uh, process at Smugs has um, gotten uh, a little bit more consolidated and so they don't need to have as many part-time people like myself um, uh, working on parks. So actually, like last year, I didn't, I didn't run a I didn't run a groomer at all. I didn't touch a single park. And actually, it's two years now, so it's a good thing in a way because now I don't have to wake up at four in the morning. Um, it's a little sad sometimes because I like to do those things. So, but you know, they they uh, they've got a system going, so I don't have to be there. Um, so I can focus primarily on the uh, the Smugs uh, ski school, and ski and snowboard school staff. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So how long have you been at Smugs? I've been there since 1999. Oh, all right. Yeah. Did you teach at Mohawk before Smugs? I did. All right. And Woodbury Ski Area in Woodbury, Connecticut. Hmm. Yeah. There's going to be a few people that are listening to this that they're going to know Woodbury. And they're going to know that, that place was, uh, was, I don't know how it is now, but it was a raging junk show. And that's what made it awesome. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they had this jump. They had the uh, the big air booter. It was called Big Bertha, okay. And the landing zone was just above the beginner area, and the <laughs> run out of Big Bertha was the beginner. Area. There it is. Oh. Yeah, this place was a junk show. <laughs> cool thing about it is they had a rope tow, and so I mean there's a hundred vertical feet for just where that rope tow was. So that guy, all he'd have to do is light up three snow guns for a night and he could have it open and his claim to fame was that he'd have Woodbury ski open ski area open before Killington every year. He was the first ski area in the east open. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's gonna be a fun fact somewhere. Yeah. I'm gonna ask. Yep. In the early nineties yeah, I think the, the trivia question would be throughout the nineties, what was the what was the first ski area open in the east? Um like, wh which one was it more often than not? And the answer is... Woodbury Ski Area. Don't tell anyone that. All right. <laughs> so, we know you've been at Smugs from 99. 
How long have you been in Ozzy or in PSIA? I've been a, uh, a member of uh, PSIA and Ozzy since I think it's 97 or 98. Um, I believe it was 98. I took a, I joined as a member and uh, attended my level one exam at um, uh, Ski Sundown in Connecticut. Always a snowboard? Yeah. Um, I, I have, I, I'm certified level one um, on Alpine. Mm -hmm. um, mostly in that, you know, in my role at Smug, oftentimes if we're short a staff member anywhere, it's nice to be able to fill in and know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, and so that having the level one gave me an opportunity to have something to train for, so I had to get better at skiing. And um, by having to get better, I was able to then mm -hmm. attain yeah. the level one certification. When's the last time you went skiing? Well, it wasn't last year. How uh, was it? Two years ago? When what? The last time I went skiing. I feel like you, you taught some beginner lessons and you I think I might like have early season and then... Yeah, I, I don't ski often. I don't think I ski last year. Um, you know, I, I have nothing, you know, uh, yeah, I skin up things. Um, I have nothing against it. It's just not something like if I had my choice to do something fun in the winter, I'm going to go snowboarding. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. That's fine. Yeah. I have my ski level one as well, and yeah. I think the last time I went skiing was probably five years ago. Hey, you know something? Yeah. And there's been times where I've been on a blue trail, and I arc over a carved turn, arc over a carved turn, I don't know, I can feel it at that point. I'm like, oh, that's what this thing's all cracked up. I, I can see what people are into it for. So, it's cool. So, uh, how long have you been on the Ed Staff? Since... 2007? I think it was 2007. Um, I tried out for the development team and I was uh, uh, fortunate enough to, to make it. Where was that tryout? That was at Killington. Okay. Yeah. And it was crazy too. We had uh, uh, the level two and three exam was the three days prior. And uh, it was rain and it was terrible and it was the worst three days of like, it was really, it was like really bad rainy conditions and you know obviously everyone made the best of it because that's what we do mm -hmm. and then that night it was the wednesday night the weather turned and it started dumping and snowing and by the time we showed up thursday morning there was like the two to four that the weatherman called for <laughs> was eight inches and um it helped to take the edge off and uh yeah i, I was at that um tryout with mark marino Oh, okay. And um, yeah, I think he, uh, I think he'd recall there was uh, some really good conditions. So you've been uh, on the Ed Staff since 2007. Uh, have you? I should say 2008. Eight. It was well, 2007, 2008 winter. Yeah. All right. Have you held any other positions while being on the Ed Staff? Um, yeah, I was the, um, I was the uh, development team and ETS coach for four seasons. Uh, currently, I'm the uh, chairperson for the uh, Aussie Steering Committee, and I'm also um, a member on the Snow Sports Management Committee as well. Mm -hmm. And most recently, right now, um, I'm, a, I'm part of a um, task force putting together a series of webinars. Sweet. Yeah. Fitness ones, correct? Yeah, and uh, yeah, actually, we got we're in a fitness series right now, and um, I've got a video for that coming out. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's a number of people on the, uh, Alpine Ed staff, one being Angelo, mm -hmm. um, I can't think of his last name Ross. right now. Yeah, Angelo Ross. And my gosh, that guy is putting countless hours into it. He's really doing a, a phenomenal job. Yeah, really make, taking, taking an opportunity and making a, a really cool thing out of it. What is your ideal event to attend? If you had to go to If I had to go, so the last time, but like, as a staff member, obviously, I end up running events. Uh, over the last number of years, I've also attended, I've, I've attended a you know, level one exam, uh, FS, uh, FS2 and stuff like that. But what was really cool was um, 2017, I went to Rider Rally when the uh, current, the current national team in their first year, um, resurrected rider rally and they had it at a basin and that was the most ideal yeah. event it was 
so cool. It was uh, beginning of May, and I remember it was raining out here, mm -hmm. and I don't like to fly. I don't really like to travel. I'm actually really boring. Um, and I remember uh, Shauna had to talk me into going. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's raining. It's going to be like blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, you're getting on the plane. Leave. And I went, and the conditions were sick. Like we had, it was powder through May. And the, the event was really cool. And so to answer the question, the ideal event was that event. And what it was, was exams for all divisions. First off, it was a national event. Mm -hmm. And so um, people from every single division could, uh, could attend which many did, um, and all of the divisions, exams, as I remember, maybe there was a level two going on just after, but for the most part, every division's events mm -hmm. were wrapped up at the time, and so everyone was just like, oh. and it was still educational, because everyone was like, you get on a chairlift with someone from any division, and you're gonna talk shop. Mm -hmm. I remember I picked up two or three things, I was like, that's cool, I'm gonna check. And otherwise, it was just like a celebration of snowboarding at A Basin. Great conditions, awesome groups. That's my ideal. That's your ideal event to go. Yeah. What's your ideal event to run? Ideal event to run? I've got a couple. I've been really, so I've, I've been very blessed over the years to run a number of the camp events. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. That's that's hard. That's like asking the old mother in the shoe which one her favorite <laughs> child is. Favorite? Um, I love freestyle camp because we take people that uh, we have a lot of members that see park. They're like, hmm, I could get into that, but oh, I got something else to do. They go to freestyle camp, kind of break the walls down a little bit, and all of a sudden, someone that was like, I don't know if I could do that by the end of the two or three days, or. They're taking care of some business they didn't really think they could do. So that's really, I guess, without slathering on about every single event and why I like every single event, I'm not going to do that to you. Um, <laughs> um, I think my ideal event is one where you can take a group of people who are apprehensive yet confident and, get, and, and um, facilitate an experience and provide instruction where they're able to do some things that they didn't necessarily think they were going to be able to do. Sweet. Yeah. Hmm. And own it too, not just get lucky like, oh, sweet, you landed. <laughs> no, you landed and yeah, you stomped it because you know what's up now. Yeah, yeah you have that skill forever. Yeah. Who did you look up to as you went through the organization? Mm -hmm. And is it the same person now? Have you changed? Tom, I'm five foot six, I look up to everyone. <laughs> With like the exception of, no, I'm not, I'm not going there. I look up to basically everyone. Um, all right, so this person doesn't like to be um, celebrated that much. Mm -hmm. Tom Vickery, for sure. I totally look up to that guy, um, even though we're probably eye level. Uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely Tom's had a big influence on, on, um, on my path in snow sports. And uh, that, that started early on. Mm -hmm. But you know, what's really cool is through the whole, my whole experience as a staff member, Tom's always been a constant, but there's been other people that have also come in and had profound influence in a short period of time. One being Terry Duffield. Mm -hmm. um, I, he, was, uh, he was my coach when I was on a dev team in ETS. And uh, I, I gotta say, profound, profound influence there. How long was Terry the coach for? Terry was coach for two terms, so six okay. years. And um, yeah, so I was at the tail end of a dev team. Like I, I elevated to ETS on my last year of dev team with him as a coach. And mm -hmm. then he was uh, my coach for my entire ETS uh, okay. tenure. And um, yeah, he, he very, a very, very profound influence, that guy. Yeah. But then honestly, so like, like, these are the dangerous parts of the questions you're asking. 
So I can now slather on about every single staff person. <laughs> one being, uh, and what, you know, if I can knock off just a few others, like Ted, mm -hmm. um, I think, and he, this might embarrass him a little bit, but during my early years on staff, um, I might not have been as tactful as I could have been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some people who will just kind of put up with it, and then there's people like Ted, who just won't put up with it. And um, I'm happy he didn't, because I needed that. Yeah. And it, 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 that, that was, from a professional standpoint, that was really, really shaping. <laughs> Definitely very, very shaping. There's a number of other people I'm, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. miss along the way, but those three specifically, throw John Hobbs in as like Yoda, mm -hmm. and, you know. Your standouts. Yeah. Kind of help you get the yeah, going. Yeah, absolutely. Keep, keep you going too. Yeah. What's your uh, preseason musts? Preseason musts? Yeah. Like once the snow's flying? Or just before, like now? Are you doing right now? to get yourself healthy or just... Or my preseason musts are like in, in season, uh, both my wife and I work weekends a lot. My preseason musts right now are to enjoy weekends with Shauna. Straight up. And we go mountain biking a lot. That's right. <laughs> we go mountain biking a lot. And so that's really it. Um, I'm 44 years old now and I've got, I'm recovering from back injury. I used to skateboard a lot more. And so mm -hmm. I always had skateboard spots I wanted to go to. I don't skate as much now just because there's some impact I need to avoid. But so uh, definitely go biking as much as possible. This time of year for mountain biking is what March is to snowboarding. Hmm. Yeah. This is like total butter time of year. Perfect temperatures, perfect weather. Perfect it's just amazing. Conditions. I gotta start pedaling then. Yeah. Yeah. This. Mm -hmm. We ride for fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's always my goal is to get out in the fall, but uh, you know. Yeah. Snowballs. And then, you know, otherwise, because the winter season is kind of jam packed, the other preseason musts are like getting the house ready, getting wood up to the woodshed, getting, you know, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Do you have any videos you watch early season? Or kind of. I've got a few videos in there that I'll plug in, and mostly they're the TB series. The TB, uh, yep. TB8, TB9, I think I still have in there. Uh, it's the one with the Modest Mouse song that starts off with Travis Rice, I think it is. It, it, that, you know, there are some things that, like, when I was younger than I am now, and that just stuck with me. And, like, that song, when I hear that song, I can't think of the name of the song right now. Um, but whenever I hear it, I think that video part. Yeah. I'm going to say, I don't think I've seen any of the TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's on my list. I have to buy the whole thing. Yeah, set. these came watch out them. back in like before there was like, you know, you, now you just watch everything on YouTube or yeah. whatever, or whatever yeah. you kids are watching these days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, ready for get the brain off snowboarding for a bit? Well, sure. Kind of sorry. Some more maybe yes or no questions. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I told you some of these questions. All right, but yeah, the rapid fire questions. If you're picking a board or picking skis. Uh, camber or reverse? I think this is the only one where I could probably uh, not answer yes. Uh, camber. All right, multi or flat? Multi camber. Camber, still camber? All right. Flat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe a multi if it's got early rise. I guess that's mm -hmm. considered multi. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, bumps or groomers? Bumps. Yes. <laughs> Woods or park? Woods. Yes. Racer freestyle. Freestyle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, the most important ones. Pie or cake? Yes. <laughs> You're a pie guy. <laughs> Waffle or pancakes? Mm. Oh, I mean, come on, man. You throw maple syrup, syrup, syrup on it and it's all good. <laughs> cookie or brownie? Cookie. All right, what kind of cookie? I don't know, chocolate chip. What's the furthest you've traveled to work an event or go to an event? Uh, well, Colorado, I went to uh, mm -hmm. Rider Rally. Rally. Yep, and I've also gone to uh, USASA Nationals out in Tahoe. Hmm. So. 
to coach or to uh, be a participant? Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's what we like to hear. Yeah. How about uh, work in the East? Uh, Virgi uh, West Virginia. Did a level two exam a couple years back. Mm -hmm. What was your road trip snack for that one? Gosh, I don't even know. Do you have Come a consistent road trip snack? Jolly Mart pizza? Oh. I don't know. Coffee? Just about anything. Right. Just I'm cheese. not too picky when it comes to bad food. <laughs> Describe your writing style. Hot mess. <laughs> I don't know. Where do you like to ride? Uh, well, so I based on your like, rapid fire questions before, like that's pretty everywhere. much everywhere. Yeah, it really it depends on the conditions. All right. Um, so if it's bring this back to, yeah, ideal day. You know, it snowed four to six last night, and that's every day it's smuggly. Every day it's smuggly. It's every day. Ah, um, I don't know. Out. Ideal day, like ride a little bit of woods, ride a little bit of park. Uh, take a lap down a lift line trail, go out back, you know. Yeah, uh, and also, I mean, so that's an ideal day off. An ideal day not off is, I don't, you know, I don't know, teaching anyone who they can have a breakthrough. <laughs> wherever that breakthrough is. Yeah, whoever yeah. needs the help. Yeah. I can vouch for Greg's day off. He's really good at finding snow where nobody else has been. Ooh. Really good at it. I've worked at Smugs for he 21 years. He knows all the secret lines and he says, Shauna, you're not going to want to follow me. I know he's going someplace like that nobody else has been. Uh, I think I follow you through one or two of those spots. It's a good time. Yeah. People ask, where'd you go to Smugs? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. Great. But he's really good at it. He has a really good mountain sense and mountain knowledge. We've got a lot of backcountry out there. It's Smugs yeah. are yeah. off piece, it's so it's kind of necessary. Yeah. Do you uh, get many hiking days in? So that's a funny question. <laughs> um, pre yeah, of, in pre season it definitely. Yeah. In season, I, I just give you a Greg Fadgate op ed. This is always exciting. Find a lot of people, a lot of people at Smugs end up hiking unnecessarily when there's a lot of good snow right in bounds. Uh, see what so, in that hiking. regard, I, I probably don't hike as much as most people do, but yeah, definitely do get. Let everybody else hike in. It's incredible. You get a big day, and like you go up for first chair, and like you get up there, and like 10 people are hiking all, like they're just already bored off and going, and like everything else is fresh. To each their own. Mm -hmm. um, that just happens to be the, the behaviors that a lot of people are taking on. Right. Yeah. yeah, otherwise, just stick close and then yeah. hunt around afterwards. Yeah. All right. How do you describe hot mess? <laughs> oh God, this is a, this is a tricky one. Um, I don't know. I think sometimes if I ever do something where someone's like, oh wow, that was cool. I probably did it by accident. Um, I normally take like six runs before I'm warmed up. <laughs> um, yeah, normally my best runs of the day are like the last three. Um, yeah, it's a uh, hot mess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I flail a lot. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Hot mess. With, that, with, with, that, with, with accidental um, uh, bouts of brilliance. One more question. Shauna had it. She hit it the nail on the head. Yeah, see? Right. Are you like me now? No. Uh, what's your coaching style or teaching style? Um, well, so that's changed over the years. Uh, I think I started, like, I think like a lot of people, I started out with like, okay, you're here for a lesson, you need to learn these things. Mm -hmm. And I've definitely turned, I think my, my style is, I hate to use this because it sounds like a buzzword, but experiential. Um, and I would say that because, um, I've moved more towards someone's here to snowboard, whether it's a new rider or not. I j just get them out and snowboard with them. Maybe I don't need to explain to them every single part of a snowboard. Or maybe I don't need to explain all the mechanics of a J turn or a carve turn or whatever. Maybe what I can do is find out what their goals are, meet them where they're at, and 
go with them on what you know a, a trail that's going to keep them comfortable and safe and happy and build from there. So I don't know if that really answers the question of like what my style is. I think. Yeah, student centered. Student centered. Yeah. Thank, so thank, like thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Yeah. But student centered for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's a change because I, I think back to some of the things I've taught in the past. And not everything I do now is a jam either, but there are some real duds out there. You know? So, you know, every, everyone has to learn. Everyone has to go through what they go through to become where they are. Yeah, that's what you think. That's yeah. what's working for you now, or working for you now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the major part. Sweet. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Alrighty, so I did it again. Well, kinda. Uh, or the camera did run out of battery, so that is a note to self. Please check the battery before, uh, you know, starting to film. But how can we stay in touch with Greg? We can stay in touch with Greg through Facebook. He is on Facebook as Greg Fatigate, and on Instagram as G Fatigate is his handle. So, if you're ever wondering what Greg's up to, hit them up on one of those platforms. Or if you're in the Northern Vermont area and you got some landscape and yard work, machinery you need done, reach out, see if Greg will do it for you.